everyone, today's tutorial is a special request from Mick Jojo Joe over on Instagram, and we are gonna be making this mitten koozie. It is so adorable and it's not that complicated. I'm gonna be using the Mushroom House 32 pin today. Um, I did try a prototype with the 48 pin. It seemed a little too big for me, but if you use any machine between 32 to 48, you should be good to go. On the 32 pin, I knit 160 rows, and not including the waist yarn on both sides. We do wanna use waist yarn because we're gonna crochet finish both of the, those ends to give it a nice, really clean finish. I found that 160 rows worked well for a standard adult hand, um, but you can also add a little bit more if you want your mitten to be a little bit longer. As I mentioned, I did a crochet finish on both of the ends. I will actually link a longer video down below um, that goes into a little bit more detail with how to do a crochet finish. The next step just requires you to put it together and lay it out. So you're gonna put the finished edges together, um, but we're not gonna stitch them closed. That's where the hand goes in. Then grab a can um, to use as a reference and you're gonna just fit it around um, so that you want it a little bit snug so that it's, cause it will stretch out just a little bit. And then we'll end up stitching uh, using a mattress stitch on the top and bottom. So I started with the bottom. It just made it a little bit easier um, when we get to the top and I'm using a mattress stitch. Now I have talked so badly about a mattress stitch in the, in the past and it really was because for large projects it seems to take forever. However, um, it does give you a really nice clean finish. So this is where I decided to hunker down and practice and play around with the mattress stitch. Um, and it actually, once you start doing it a lot, it really is not as complicated um, or time consuming as I had originally thought. To make the mattress stitch, you're gonna first line up the stitches so that the Vs are going the same direction. And then you're gonna take your needle and you're gonna go under the bars of the stitches. That's what's actually gonna give it a nice, super, super seamless finish. So you'll see you take your needle, you go under, and I typically do two bars. Um, Depending on the project, you might need to do one bar, but I just do two bars on one side, and you'll see once you tighten it up, it does start to get a really clean finish. And then you go back to the other side and you pick up two bars as well. This is where using those stitch markers comes in handy so that you can keep those stitches all facing the same direction. And one tip that I learned um, by doing this so many times is don't pull your stitches tight until you're ready um, to finish that row. I found that if I pull them as I go, it's actually a little bit harder to keep the stitches aligned. To finish up the bottom layer, after I pulled my yarn um, from my mattress stitch on the wrist portion, I did take my needle and I'm gonna weave in and out of all four layers in the stitches. So definitely make sure that you get all four layers. You go back and forth all the way down to the end. And then we're going to actually uh, attach or graft the front portion of the mitt together. Once you're done with the bottom, just turn your work, and now we're gonna stitch the front of the mitt together. This is important. Um, I didn't do anything fancy here. I just stitched both sides together, just pulling the needle through one side and then going back and pulling on the other. And then when I got to the end of the row, I just gave it a nice tug to make sure it was secure, and then I tied it off. For the top, I used that same piece of yarn and went back to our handy mattress stitch. And uh, I did a mattress stitch all around the circular portion to finish that first. Um, and again, I uh, really love how the mattress stitch turned out. I'm gonna give you a satisfying view of what it looks like pulling it together here in just a second. And uh, again, going to the other side, getting that mattress stitch done in the round. And then here we go. Again, I'm building this up because it's so satisfying. And here's what it looks like when you pull it together. Oh my gosh, that is so satisfying. For this piece, we're just gonna tie off right now and hide those yarn tails. And then we will finish by doing the top portion of the wrist. Once again, you're gonna get some practice with that mattress stitch. I started in the center just to make sure that it was reinforced um, with the center portion and the wrist, and then just did a nice little mattress stitch all the way down. Just because I love it so much, here's another view, satisfying view of those stitches coming together and creating a seamless look with the mattress stitch. 
After you tie off and hide all of your yarn tails, you're ready to use your amazing new mitten koozie. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you so much again to McJoJoJo for the suggestion. If you have a suggestion on something you want to see, let me know, join, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody. Until next time, see ya.